Yeah. So last time we started the time travel. Sorry, this is not the latest one. This is the one. Right. So we started with uh, briefly with the uh, snowflake uh, time travel feature, and uh, as you can, as you by now you know that you know we can travel back in time to access the historical data uh, in case it is lost, or even in case uh, you know of or, of dropping a table or. Uh, you know, deleting some data, right? And that is possible because of the immutable property of the partitions, the micro partitions. Uh, and also uh, by immutable, we mean we don't update any partition as such, that data remains as it is. So in case there is an update on certain data, so that particular partition where the data is lying, it doesn't get updated. So it gets deleted and it gets uh, the new data gets inserted or a new micro partition gets created. So when you say deleted, it doesn't get deleted immediately. Okay, so there is certain retention up to which the snowflake will uh, persist with that data and then later on it will remove it. So all that we will see today. Uh, I am audible, right? Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So we will see how to access the previous data today. It is very simple. Uh, it is by using simple SQL extensions, we will be able to do that. So uh, these are the keywords. Okay, so to support time travel, the following SQL uh, extensions have been implemented. So that is at before, you can use either of them. Okay, it can be specified in the select statements and create and clone while you are cloning, right? Uh, uh, any table or any database or any schema, that time also you can use this. Uh, time tra time travel feature by using this clause add before so that also we will see when we are looking at cloning that time we will see okay. the clause you the clause uses one of the following parameters to pinpoint the exact historical data you wish to access so you can access by specifying the timestamp up to what timestamp you want to go back in time and access the data then you can create an offset like what is the current time minus the previous time that you want, want to go back in maybe 60 seconds one minute one hour two days but so that is the thing but the offset so along with this at and before you can provide three parameters like timestamp offset and statement statement means that the query id for example uh, you know what was the previous suppose there was a pre, there was an update on the table okay so previous to, so there'll be a query ID generated for that update, right? So previous to this query ID, what was the, uh, you know, what was the state of that data? So we'll see that and undrop command for table schemas and database. So by accidentally, if you drop a table, you can always go and undrop the table as it is or schema as it is or database also. Okay. So let's look at uh, a quick demo here. Close these worksheets. Okay. Uh, let me create a table. I'll not do anything on this. Let me create a table. Yes. Select. Let's go 
Okay, because this uh, demo, I will not disturb this table here. We will use the uh, one I just created now for the demo purpose. So I just created one with the data as it is from EMP basic one. Okay, so we'll go it. So first thing, what we will do is we'll first update the first name. Okay, and then we will update the city name also. And this is, as you can see, there is no where clause here, right? So if I fire this statement, it means it will basically update all the rows. There's no where clause, right? So say by mistake, we do it. It can happen, right? Sometimes we forget the where clause and then uh, we want to get back the data. Right? So let, let me do this. So as you can see, there's first name here, Wallace, D and all that. So what I'll do is I'll update it. I have updated all the 20 rows here. If I select it, <coughs> sorry. Okay. So everything has got updated at PNC, which is wrong. Correct. And if I go to the history, let me also take that. Query ID also. <laughs> so this was the query ID which you got generated when I updated this uh, this data. And again, I will do a wrong update. This time for the city. Okay, now everything is Bangalore. Let me grab the query ID generated for that. Okay. So now, if I want to go back in time, obviously I need to know the previous data. If I want to update it back to the correct values, I will have to know what was the previous state. Right? I don't. Have, I, I have not kept any backup while creating the table. So uh, I want to go back in time a little bit. So as I said, I can use this add clause or before clause also up to you what you want to use. And you want to see what was what was the, uh, you know, uh, you know, what was the data some say two, three minutes back. Okay, so basically, so see, see what it says after two minutes, you realize you did wrong. Okay. And if you realize after five hours, you need to travel back by five hours. How long you can travel depends on the table retention period. Okay. So as I said, I have shown you in the last class, the retention period of tables depends on the addition you are using. Right. So if it is an enterprise addition, there's something, some other value is there. If it is a standard one, some other value is there and so on. Okay, so for standard, it is seven days and for uh, enterprise onwards, it is 90 days, up to 90 days. So we can quickly go and check that as well, which means this basically, if I am right now, I am on business critical, right? So for me, it is 90 days, right? So up to 90 days, I can go back and get this data. I can. Uh, travel back in time from today till 90 days ahead. I can come back to this state of data and re retrieve what was there at that point in time. So let's, uh, let's, and you will see how to see the retention period of the table also in some time. Uh, yeah, no flake additions. So this is this is a documentation link where you can see the addition details also. So if there might be some table here. 
Yeah. I'll show it to you from my slides itself. Just now you were showing, uh, Abdul, before you start the class, yeah. you were showing um, three columns where uh, some addition has 0 to 90 days and uh, some. you were showing this screenshot just now. Just now? Yeah. You were, I see, before you start the class. Oh, yeah. Not this one, you are showing another one. Okay, fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, so if, if you see here, one day of time travel. Okay, so for standard, it is one day of time travel, which is allowed. That means uh, you can travel back in time up to one day. And from enterprise onwards, it's up to 90 days. Okay, but by default, you will see that even if it is enterprise, the default setting of time travel retention period is something else. Okay, so we'll see that in some time. But before that, I want to show you if you go back in time. See that the time travel is not available for table EMP. The requested time is either beyond the allowed time travel or before the object creation. So basically this is, uh, it is saying for uh, certain, I think it is what, two minutes, but we did not, we, our time has not elapsed till now, right? It was just at least some one minute or something. See, so if I go a little. Yeah, now we don't time, two minutes. Sorry? Now it become two minutes like. Put, it was two hours working, right? Eight, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that is that is one issue. Like you need to keep on. You, you need to know the exact time actually. What what time it was. Right. So offset is this one. Specifies the difference in seconds from the current time to use for time travel in the form minus n, where n can be an integer arithmetic expression. Example minus 120 is minus 30 is 120 seconds, minus 30 into 60 is 1800 seconds or 30 minutes. Okay. So thirty into sixty is thirty minutes. So two minutes, how much will it that be? Okay. 
Okay, this is the on. See, yeah, ten. So at this point in time, okay, this was the values, and these cities values are also the same. So if I, if I, uh, it, so this will elapse quickly, right? So if I now make it eleven, see, it's not available, which means I can go up to ten point two, and point three, and point. Five, one, six, seven, right. So here, this is the time up to where I can go latest. So at the eleventh minute, <clears throat> if I go. Now it now it has come. For twelve it is yet to come. So minus sixty it is yet to come. So I need to know the exact time basically. Three, three, four, like that. Okay. So I need to specify the time at what time particular time that data was there. Either you can give offset, or as uh, uh, or even more better is to give the statement ID. Okay, so you have this before clause for that. <clears throat> so you should give before, and you can give the statement ID like this. So that's why I recorded those two statements. So see, <clears throat> specifies the query ID of a statement to use the reference point for time travel. <clears throat> so this could this is possible for any DML, TCL, or select statement. And uh, so if I go back, and if I use this particular query ID. Uh, from so in this case, we need to use before. So let me just see if I have that before thing. Before. So see, you can either give the exact timestamp also, like at what timestamp I had changed that data, or you can give this before for timestamp for time related stuff. Uh, whether when you're using timestamp or offset, you need to give at, or but when you're using the statement, you need to give the before the statement ID. Okay, so I will just copy this. And let's see the state at this point. See, <laughs> right now the data is all, all this first name is all PHC and the city is all Bangalore right now, right? So before this update statement, I have taken the screenshot, I mean, the snapshot of what was the data. Oh, this is coming from the time travel, okay? This is coming from those immutable partitions, which are now marked for deletion, okay? And they will be available only up to the retention period specified for this table. Okay, if it is one day, so after two days, if I fire this command, it will not give me any data. Okay, so and this 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 is not kept as a backup. This is just because of the uh, time travel feature which which was provided by Snowflake. And using this, I can get a I can create a new table if I want to go and restore the data at this point of time. And also after this, also I had updated one more wrong update. I had updated all the cities as Bangalore, 
so i can go uh, before that id as well so if i start from See, so before updating the city, I had already updated the first names. Okay, so this is anywhere off. So I can see that city was all this, which was which was before updating all the cities uh, without the where clause. So either you can go with that offset, or either you can go with the statement ID, or either you can go with the timestamp. So this is how you can travel back in time to see the data what was there. Right. So this is not only for restoring data, but this is mostly also for comparing. Like if there was any sales data, which you want to probably uh, yesterday there was certain sales, and maybe you have updated them with today's sales, and you want to go back in time and compare. So you can do that as well. You can create a previous history table from there as well from the time travel feature. So, and the other one which we saw was the dropping of table. So, firstly, what I'll do is I'll restore the table. Okay. So, I can simply use this statement uh, as it is. Okay. I'll drop the table. Drop table. Right now, I'll just show you the current state of the table first. Okay. So, this is the wrong data which is updated PHC and Bangalore for all the city. So, what I'll do is I'll drop this table. I'll recreate it from this. Shit. Oops. Shit. Okay. I accidentally dropped the table EMP and I have undropped it now. Okay, that means I've restored it. So what do you think if I do a select on EMP, what data should I get? What do you think? Uh, updated data with the uh, Bangalore and uh, PHC, right? Yes, and PHC, yeah. Right, yeah, here it is. So what I'll do is I'll create underscore temp table here from this table. Okay, and I'll check the contents of this table now. So this is the correct data, as you can see, first names and city names are, are correct. Now I can drop it. And then now I can create. I have created, I dropped the EMP table which was wrongly updated. And I recreated it from the temporary table. Okay, I have it restored back. The main table is restored back. And now I can drop the temporary one. Okay. So this is quite simple and show parameter tables if you want to get some information on the tables uh, some specific table you can always do show tables and like so here see retention time one day okay but uh, as i told you for enterprise editions it is up to 90 days, right? This is an enterprise, this is an enterprise plus edition. 
it is uh, business critical. So obviously, uh, it will inherit the features of uh, edition, uh, enterprise edition. So, but, but why is it one year? Okay. So by default, always Snowflake, irrespective of the edition, gives one by default. Okay. But you can go and alter the retention period. For this, I'll be able to alter. So you guys have uh, uh, you you guys have created standard or or enterprise. Can you tell me? Enterprise only, but we I don't have account now. But okay, no. it's got. Uh, yeah. No, you have the account, but they are probably uh, locked it for uh, asking you to uh, add the billing details, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you can create one more, I mean, new one from the same email ID. Yeah, I will keep it there. Yeah, that's fine. Why I was asking was if you have, if you have say standard edition, and if you go and see your retention period like this, and you try to alter it. So I just wanted to, uh, I mean, make sure that it doesn't let you do that because it is a standard edition, right? So see here, what I did was now I want to say change it. I want to change it to either zero or whatever. By default, it is one. So if I want to say make it 10 days, okay. So I have alter table, EMP set. This is the parameter data retention time in days. Okay. So and I think it is, it should show up in parameters also. Like it's not there, it's a table level. So Abdul, there, Abdul, there is no option to uh, create a table. Uh, set, set this while creating the table. Yeah, yeah, you can. You can do that. Yeah, yeah. And also, yeah. there should be some way to set at schema level, right? Schema level. Yes, level. A schema also, database also, everywhere you also, can yeah. uh, create it. You can, you can add this clause, uh, data retention time in this. So when we, yeah. when I, I just told you that Snowflake SQL uh, topic, right? So that yeah. time we are going to cover uh, some some special things like that. Okay. But uh, but as you asked, while creating the table, also you can specify what can be my retention time, data yeah. data retention time. Yeah, in, in the real scenarios, uh, that would be the case. We don't uh, go and update. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You want. Uh, so I see. I just uh, altered it to ten days. Okay. So if I now go back to this show tables like EMD. You can see this retention time is 91. Oh, sorry, 110. If I try to make it 100, exceeds maximum allowable retention time, which is 90. So the point I wanted to make was even though the enterprise edition says up to, so it says up to 90 days, but by default, when you first create the table, first time, by default, it makes it as one uh, day retention because obviously it is about saving the cost. So as a client, if you know they already give the upper limit as default and say the client is unaware of it, and they might say that who asked you to give the maximum limit, right? You could have asked us, or you could have set a default of say some, some minimum level and maybe you could have informed us. So that is why they have kept it as minimum in the beginning. But if you and want also, to go and change. Uh, yeah. And also what yeah. I believe is right, it is not that they don't want to give 100. It is It saves huge money to uh, Snowflake because uh, if they want to enable, uh, give the provision, you, since you have selected uh, Enterprise Edition, they have to have the backup of your data. They have to select the standard S3 uh, bucket policy to store it for uh, three months by default for all the tables that create. That is unnecessarily right. cost, right? But anyway, that costing uh, costing will be built to the client, right? The storage cost that, no, uh, no, that yeah, will yeah, be incurred. Yeah, yeah, it will be built to the client, right? It's not necessarily Snowflake have to pay to pay, pay to the S3 by default. Since you have right. Right? right? Right. The moment when they enable the time dependent time retention period to 90 days, that time the actual cost will start to incur, right? 
Right, right. I mean, of of course, uh, uh, because that is how much data you are retaining. So th- yes. that is the amount of S three storage. Also, you will need extra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. What whatever the approach is, most likely have start doing now, right? That makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, that's right. I mean, ultimately, it's about cost saving and unnecessarily why to uh, you know allocate space, uh, you know, at the first hand. Maybe if you want, you can always go and uh, alter it, right? And see, I can alter it back to less also. So I just altered it back. Yeah. Back moreover, to moreover, if you see the real time warehouse scenario, right? Not yeah. all the table requires the time table specific, right? If there are hundred yeah. table, right? The main dimension <coughs> table. If you see, there are hundred dimension tables, right? Yes. There are only ten to twenty table dimension table have the possibility of frequently changing. Rest of the eighty table will be uh, ideal. It won't right. change. Let's say time table, right? Yeah. The, the, when the year starts, they create the table. They put it as a time table. That will be ideal for next year. Right. Holidays and all. Yeah. Yeah. Everything will be calculated. Put it as a time table. Dimension table. There will be any change. Why um, um, Snowflake or company have to pay for um, uh, maintaining a, a S3 <coughs> bucket, which will have to back up for 30 days, right? It right. has to store the version for 30 days. That is the additional cost unnecessarily. Only the table which requires to change every frequently on the transaction table, fact table, which means say, right? That right. table is the table only required to have the time retention. Yeah, yes, that's why. Uh, since you brought that topic out, so I thought of, you know, going back to this slide. So good, you brought that out. So see, it is as you know, we have certain types of table types in Snowflake. So if you're using a temporary time retention period, is default is one. Okay, it I mean, or for, for even for transient. So anyway, if you are, you know, creating a table which is not permanent. Okay, transient as you know is permanent only, but you cannot retain it after one day. Because the the retention period is only one, so that is the risk you can take if you want to. But for permanent, it is up to ninety days. So it is not for all tables which Snowflake has done that. Okay, for temporary and transit, it is always one. Moreover, after that, after the time travel period gets over, they cannot uh, retrieve it back because it doesn't go into fail safe. But even though the time travel period goes. Uh, I mean, uh, goes beyond the retention time. For example, you have set it to two, but after three days you realize, okay, I know uh, there's some wrong update or the data got deleted. You can you as you still have seven days to restore it, but uh, but in fail safe you cannot restore using the select statements like add and before. You have to contact Snowflake team for that. So for permanent tables, there is extra security or extra backup facility provided, uh, irrespective of the time retention period. Up, uh, up. Uh, once your retention period is over, it is called as moving the table into fail-safe mode. Okay, and that only you have up to seven days to restore it, and that too you have to contact Snowflake support. For temporary and transient, you have maximum of one, irrespective of the addition, whether it is enterprise, business, whatever it is, you will get just one, uh, uh, one day of time for ta- time travel retention for temporary and transient. And there's zero fail safe. So what you were talking about uh, the dimensions and fact tables. So accordingly, you can design using these snowflake, uh, you know, properties of tables and features. So it's up to you, like how you want to design. Yeah, it is up to a business case, right? On this yeah. table, we are moving to a snowflake. How I'm building the warehouse in the snowflake. Right. right. That is that. If you see the fact table, right? That updates every day. The change is will be huge, right? So yes. this, those table and all they will select the permanent with the uh, time travel of 90 or uh, 100 or whatever it may be or what they will do right they will uh, from the snowflake anyhow they will have the s3 account right they right. will create an um, archive process they will extract from the table and keep put it in the archive table for example last month right i will uh-huh. go to time table last month i will extract the table and put it in the glacier or the deep uh, glacier like that. Right? right. If anything that I have to go back and search, I will get it from there. I don't have to pay for the snowflake for this. Right? That's the, yeah, exactly. So uh, yeah. ultimately, it's about cost retaining and how smartly you can use these properties of snowflake. Yeah, yeah. That is why uh, 
they are high on to hire someone who knows the entire um, the uh, the way how snowflake charging behaving right yeah and pricing yes correct pricing and all yeah yeah there is no nuts there is in the fifi what i i see right by the market right uh, abdul yeah there is not that much you have to technically be very good strong in this snowflake then i think that you have to write a coding like that right 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 something right. that you know the architecture the building structure how they charge anyone who worked in the pl sql for 10 years right they will easily go and they write the procedure in uh, using javascript and change whatever yeah Either they they use some you see tools, if right? you have experience in database programming so hmm. you i mean you it's not that it is very difficult for you to pick this up right yeah yeah uh, you, see, you have worked you, on you know PLC a company code. called fidelity um, yeah yeah i have heard yeah fidelity is a very big uh, <clears throat> uh, company which means that you don't be imagine the entire mm -hmm. us right and there, there is a concept of 401k which is a uh, pension fund how we have a employee contribution pension fund right mm -hmm. uh, epf yeah it is vtf right not yeah. epf epf uh, epf EPS, EPS, right? Yeah. The ah. same way, the, the the concept in US is called four zero. Here, oh. EPS, you don't invest in the market, right? Share market, right? But in US, all the uh, yeah, EPF, uh, in the government will give you ten percent as return in India, right? Here, right. that is not right. the case. Ah. All the pension will be go into four zero. Okay. That four zero will be for, uh, invested in the market, share market. Right. It will grow ten percent, fifteen percent like that. Right. In the US, in the US, ninety-five percent of the four zero in the account is maintained by the fidelity. Okay. Their okay. Their early profit, their early profit is is hundred billion like that. Right. So right. that the fidelity is hiring. If you know, if you know PLC equal, they are hiring. Right. They are moving the entire industry of it. If you know Correct. PLC equal, they will hire you. Correct. Because there is. Uh, there is. Uh, yeah. I last week I came. No, they will hire you. If you know, if you have good experience, SQL, PLC equal, and all. Uh, uh, SQL based programming experience such as C SQL, right? They will hire you. They will put you in the Snowflake project. That is what it is. Correct. Correct. So, so the, that's what I mean. Yeah. Uh, I, the Snowflake trained uh, folks are not there much in the market. So, what the only way possible for them to do this is either to hire some guy who knows SQL and then give him training separately on Snowflake. That's what some companies do. I mean, because of obviously, once after five, five six years, people will be there who will know Snowflake. So that time, you know, they will expect who knows Snowflake. They will hire. But as of now, they need to hire someone uh, who knows some similar technology, and then they can be trained on it. So that's how always the market works, right? Yeah, and also they use different companies, different different variables, right, uh, uh, Abdul? Yeah, because some organization use Redshift, right? You cannot yes. expect to have. A, a, they will ask you uh, all this. You you know utility tool. You know SQL, yes, SQL, yes. Deals, SQL uh, Python. You know any other uh, cloud based utility tools like as AWS Glue or right. Atlas and Fitron, DBT, Stitch, and all different different companies, different different tools. Now you correct, cannot correct. expect or hire someone who knows everything what you have been using in your organization. Yes, yeah, so basic is SQL. So uh, the basic or the core. Technology you need to know to work on these technologies which you have named is SQL and some yes. little bit Python also. So yeah, Python uh, is important. Now. Python is something yeah. like uh, you cannot live without Python if you are right, the right. data thing. But like but that. to learn DBT, it's not. I mean, to, to learn Python or DBT and all that, Python is not necessary. I mean, SQL yeah, is very true. important. Is, yeah, SQL is yeah. yeah, right. So uh, I mean, as you said, if you know PL SQL, they are you know anyway hiring. I I have seen many people like that also in my Wipro company also they used to hire and give training also so yeah what you're saying is right so yeah so coming back to this time travel feature uh, I'll just I just showed you the demo let me go back to the slides once again So I'll just uh, I'll just read out certain important features or points of the time travel data retention period. So see, the data retention period specifies the number of days <clears throat> for which this historical data is preserved, and therefore time travel operations like select, create, 
an undrop can be performed on the data. Okay, so data retention period, of course, is up is a limit up to which you can travel back in time. And for standard, it is one day. And for enterprise onwards, it's up to 90 days. But by default, whenever you create a table, it's one day retention time. The standard retention period is one day, that is 24 hours, and is automatically enabled for all Snowflake accounts. All, okay. For Snowflake standard edition, the retention period can be set to zero. So you can even set it to zero also, okay. It is not that it has to be what only. If you don't want to have a time travel feature, you can just set it to zero. So minimum is zero. It is, it is not necessary that, you know, uh, at least one day is required. So it's up to you. They have given full flexibility up to you in terms of saving the cost. So again, it, yeah, it will Abdul, be... Abdul, yeah. Abdul, yeah. I have a question here. Yeah. Right. Um, I think that uh, the question is... Right. I have chosen the enterprise, right? Yeah. So enterprise, uh, is, is, since I choose enterprise, my uh, billing credit charge is different, right? Yes, yes, correct. So correct. No matter, no matter, I use <coughs> 390 or uh, zero or one, anyhow, I am paying, pay, paying the charge, or because of the retention period, I said 90, I have to pay something more. Uh, see, you got my question right. Yeah, yeah. So if you go to the accounts here, and if you go to storage used, so see, they will not charge you for time travel. Okay, they will charge you for fail safe. So this is the total that you can uh, when you. This is the individual breakup of the various features or the data that will be residing. Uh, if you want to calculate the total cost. So it is the database storage plus stage plus fail safe. Okay. So whenever, whenever you, so if you want to look at some, what is your storage cost, it is just not a database stage. It is also a part of stage. That is the files that you have kept in your stage that you have not removed. And also the fail safe, that seven days period up to which your data is available uh, to be restored of course, by contacting Snowflake support. So that is how they are they calculate the storage uh, uh, cost. Okay, so it's okay. Uh, so which means that no matter I uh, use the retention or I don't use the retention period, I have to pay. Yes, yes. Seven I days. Think I have choose the other enterprise edition. Under edition. See, but but it is see up to ninety days if you retain the table <coughs> table data. So obviously up to that time, you are preserving the data. So that cost will increase, right? But if you have retained the table up to one day and, and one day elapses, immediately your fail safe starts, your fail safe uh, zone starts. Let me go back to that slide. Just like, see this. Current data, that is the data that you created just now. Time travel will start. Okay, either it will be one or 90 days. Okay, once this time travel retention period is over, that whole data moves to fail safe. Okay, there's no user operations allowed as you can see, like how we are doing select, clone and undrop, right? That we cannot do anymore, but we but it is recoverable, but you need to contact Snowflake support. So now if there's a table, say you have chosen retention of two days and after, till the two days, uh, you are basically asking Snowflake to retain whatever changes are happening on that up to two days correct so that will be part of your cost immediately after two days it will this whole data uh, that whole time travel retention uh, uh, what do you call those partitions they will move to fail safe that is that is you cannot anyway uh, you know uh, restore it using the select and all that you cannot do that up from the two days back so now that time travel retention, those particular changed data in that period of two days is no more there. So that cost is gone. This, this is the new cost, which is there in the fail safe up to seven days from now. After seven days also, if you don't recover, you don't, you don't have the requirement to recover. So that is also gone. Oh. So that is, that is how the cost will reduce. Okay, okay, got it there. So it means, even though if you choose enterprise edition, if you did yeah. not, choose the retention of 90 days 
the yes. storage co- cost will not incur it will be for one day one day I mean, yeah, yeah 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 one day not for 90 days yeah no yeah not for 90 days no yeah yeah, yeah. that makes sense yes. right so it is up to you how much you want to choose yeah so yeah for for snowflake standard edition the retention period can be set to zero or run set back to one at the account and object level that is databases schemas and tables so at the account level also you can uh, set a particular value for everything for all the objects okay uh, it is not that in, so you have a say you you have a policy as per your business case that uh, all the tables which which i will create they should have retention period of 10 days irrespective of their size whatever you do, you're not going to go to individual table level or database level or schema level it is just a policy so you can do that at account level or you can do that at individual level also okay so this altered table right altered table emp this is at individual level i did correct but if i want to do it at account level i can say alter account say i want to keep it for two for everyone uh, let me just quickly see the period for emp it is one emp underscore basic EMP underscore basic. It is also one. So let me change that some other value. Maybe I'll make it three. Right. So let me see if this works. Right. So I have set the date uh, account data retention time equal to two. Let's see. It will not change, but So I can basically set it at the account and object level. I can do that. So it's up to you, like how you want to decide it. And here for enterprise edition, the all higher is obviously uh, for transient databases and tables and schemas, retention period is from zero to one. That table, that chart we have seen right some time back. It is applicable to databases and schema also. And for transient tables and both temp and temporary tables also. So in transient case, you can create a transient database and schema also along with table and stage also. Right? No, I don't think stage, but database and schema also. But in case of temporary, you cannot create temporary database or temporary schema. You can create temporary tables and you can create temporary stages also. Okay, so it, it is it doesn't mean that transient uh, and table and temporary is only restricted to table objects. So you can create database schema and stages also uh, accordingly. And for permanent databases, schemas and tables, retention period can be set from any value up to zero to 90 days. So we've just seen that. And by default, it is uh, set to one only. So if you <coughs> say, show databases like demo, See, retention time is two. So while if I just create, uh, because if I if I let me create one more new table, a new database, say MO. finish. Let me create a table inside it. Thank you.
Now let me check. Then it's for new. I gave a wrong spelling while creating. So see, it is taking the value of account level. Right? I had set it to no, it's taking two. I don't know why it's taking two. Let me check the table. Okay, yeah, it's taking two, correct. So I have set account uh, level to two. So that's why I can give, while creating database, I can give its retention time at object level also. But since I have not given anything, it took the account level one, right? So ideally it will be one, right? Whenever we create a table, it is one. So uh, because account level is also set to one only, but if you want to give at individual level while creating that database or creating table or even alter later, you can do that. Okay. So if I say I want to alter it right now, it is two, right? I will alter the database with say, okay. Back to one. Okay. I've done it. So it's one now, but by default, it took the account level one, which was two. So let me see the table uh, also what it is. It will be two. Like. So table, okay. So we are not in the demo DB. Let me change it to this. So by default, it is. Retention time is one. Okay. Because, because I I altered the retention time of database. See, so it took the retention time of database. So it happens hierarchy wise. Okay. Let me again say let me drop this table again. This drop entire database now. Drop database. And then we will see without altering what, what are the values. And the account is retention time is let me make it four. It's four. Uh, okay. Now let me go back and recreate a database. So I created a new database, demo db underscore new. And where is the statement? Yeah. See, it is four. Okay, so it's taken the account. I'll just create uh, a table here inside demo db. Tab. This table is there. So, show tables. 
it's also four. Okay, it's by default taken the, at the account level. Okay, but it basically takes the database one. So let me now alter it, alter the database back to one. Okay, if I go and look at, I have changed the retention period of demo DB new back to one instead of four. It's one. Okay. See, it took the uh, retention period of its upper level hierarchy. So if you don't to create a database with say retention period two, so whatever objects you create under it without specifying the retention period at the individual level, it will take one hierarchy up. Okay, so that's how it will work. So I think we'll read about that in the slide as well. What about schema level, uh, Abdul? For example, I said something in database level. Yeah. But schema level, I said uh, database level, I said one. But schema level, I set up two. What if we create the table without mentioning the data retention uh, in the it table? Take schema table. level, you know, one hierarchy. Uh, of... Okay, yeah. So schemas, see, demo DB new. Okay, let me drop it again. Okay. So we have account retention time set as four right now. So I will not do any alterations. I'll go simply go and create a uh, database. And by default, when we create a database, we get two schemas, right? Information schema and public. And I'll create a new schema also. I will see that also created, right? So by default, it will take the account level uh, value. So obviously it will be four only four. Now if I go to public, it's four, right? For the demo DB new, it's four. Okay. Now I'll create a table. So it should be four, right? I have not done any changes and I'll create one more schema also. Let's okay. say demos. So let's say demo is for schema. It will be also four, obviously. And I'll create one table also there. Go back to tables. I'll say yeah, I created this table called Tab, tab schema in the new schema and i will it should also be four okay it's four so now what I'll do is I'll alter at the schema level of demo schema. Okay. I will say, uh, make it one. Alter schema, demo schema and set the retention time of schema level at the schema level to one. I need to change the selected database. Okay, done. Let me see the retention period now of every 
from the beginning. Database, nothing I have done. I have done no alteration. So it is four only. It took its account level value. And what was it? It has this public schema. I did not do any changes there as well. So it's still four. M tab is the table under that schema. No changes. So it's four. Okay. But I did changes in the demo schema under that database. I made it one. Correct. So let's see. Okay. So as as per the alteration, it's correct. It is one. In for table level, I didn't do anything at that under that schema, demo schema, right? So let's see. So tables like temp underscore tab underscore schema. I need to change the schema here. See, it's one. Okay, earlier when I uh, when I showed you, it was four, right? But as soon as I changed the retention period of schema, demo schema, it affected the other objects as well. But say so I don't want to do Got it. Sorry, yeah, got yeah. it. Yeah, but say I, I, st I, I mean, irrespective of the schema, right? I want to alter the retention of my table to say two days. It's fine. My schema is one day, but what I want to do is I want to change the table level to say something more, maybe two days. Let's try to do that as well. Right now, if I see it's one okay, I'll do it two now. Suspense statement set executed successfully. We go to this retention time. Schema is still one. And table is two. Okay, so if you don't specify, it will take the retention by ret default retention time of your one hierarchy level up object. So that's how that retention period works. <clears throat> right. So let's let's talk about a little more. When the retention period ends for an object, right? Okay. So if you have set whatever limit, two days, one day, 50 days, once it gets over, the historical data is moved into Snowflake fail safe zone. Okay, that's called as moving into fail safe. So whatever changes were done within this, those two days uh, and the, and the uh, retention time has elapsed, it will not be recoverable through the select statement. Okay, you will have to, it as it will be moved to Snowflake fail safe zone. That's how you say, okay. And it is, as you saw the earlier slide, it is not recoverable by select statements and how we uh, how we got the backup, I mean, how we recovered the table, right? When we did the wrong update, it's not going to happen like that because we, it will not be allowed. It will give you either like we were seeing, right? Uh, time table, time travel is not allowed. Either the table is gone into so fail safe, some kind of error was coming, you'll get that. Error. So you have to contact Snowflake support for that. Historical data is no longer available for query. query. Past objects cannot be cloned. Past objects that were dropped <coughs> can no longer be restored. To specify the data retention period of time travel, the data, the date retention time in, a, in days, this is the parameter that we have been updating till now, can be used by users with the account admin role to set the default retention period for your account. Okay, so account admin role only can do those changes. The same parameter can be used to explicitly override the default when creating a database schema and individual table. So we have just seen that as well. <clears throat> Even if whatever limit is set on the account level, you can still override by altering that particular uh, individual objects. Uh, the data retention period for database schema or table can be changed at any time. So we did that as well. Okay. No tasks are required to enable time travel. It is automatically enabled with standard one day retention period. Okay. It is always one day for all the enterprises or all the additions. However, you may wish to upgrade to 
enterprise addition to enable considering longer data retention periods up to 90 days for database schema and tables. Note that extended data retention requires additional storage, which will, which will be reflected in your monthly storage charges. So it will be reflected here in the databases. This is the total is plus database storage plus state storage plus fail safe. So unless and until it moves to fail safe, you will not be incurred. Once it moves to fail safe, like till that time, say it is two days retention. Till that time, it is just taking backups uh, behind the scenes in the S3 only. So there's no cost of fail safe as such. So it will move to fail safe once that retention is gone. Time travel cannot be disabled for an account. However, it can be disabled for individual databases, schemas and tables by specifying time, this parameter with value of zero for the object. Okay, also users with account role can set data retention time at zero at the account level, which means all that databases created in the account have no retention period by default. However, this default can be overridden at any time for any database schema or table. So, so obviously, the retention period that you have set at the object level will always override anything at the account level. Okay, so if they don't match, if the don't, if the values don't match at account level and your specific object level, like that is database or schema or something, that individual level value will be, uh, for, uh, I mean, uh, taken into consideration. Data retention period can be set at both account level and object level that we have seen. Object level data retention period overrides the account level. If an object doesn't have its data retention period set, then it inherits the data retention period from the object at the upper level hierarchy. Okay, we saw that as well. Increasing retention will cause the data to be retained for longer time period. Obviously, the higher the number of data retention, you can keep going back into history, historical data up to that particular point in time. <clears throat> decreasing will reduce the time for data to be retained in time travel, but it will also reduce the cost. However, the process of moving the data from time travel into fail safe is performed by a background process. So, so there's no special uh, task that we have to perform for moving data uh, from time travel to fail safe. It is all taken care by the snowflake uh, behind the scenes. <clears throat> so the change is not immediately visible. Snowflake guarantees that the data will be moved but does not specify when the process will complete. Until the background process completes, the data is still accessible through time travel. So even if, say, I mean, it, it doesn't happen, okay, but say your retention period was two days, but somehow, uh, you know, fail safe took, say, three days. So even though your retention is of two days and still it's not moved to fail safe, you can still go and access uh, back in time, okay? So it, it won't happen as such, but that's what Snowflake tells you. Until till the time that data, historical update, changes, whatever it is, has not moved to fail safe, you don't you can still access it through time trap feature. That is your select statements or cloning or undropping and all that. So this is the syntax like what uh, we just saw. And here, uh, like Shiva, you were asking, right? Uh, can we set at the object level while creating it. So yes, this is the one. So you yeah, can create Abdul, What they are telling so, is Abdul, yeah. they will, once they move to the, some other uh, S3 uh, storage uh, method yeah. which means the glacier, once they move it, they will drop it the current uh, uh, standard S3. Incidentally, <laughs> what I believe is, they use some, for example, they are using S3 standard, right? Yeah. They will move the um, S3 objects to the glacier or deep glacier. Then once they move it, they will drop that uh, particular objects from the S3. Yes, quite possible because, because uh, yeah, that is more cheaper. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that is quite possible. But uh, I have not come across that in the documentation as of yet. Uh, when you go to the fail safe section, right? Uh, they have not mentioned yeah, anything it like that. It is abstracted, right? It is, they don't mention yeah, what, what, yeah. Right, Which means right. that, uh, um, what did have, uh, why they are telling the Snowflake support team will get the data, right? The S3, if, if anything, which you uh, put it in the glacier or deep, the deep glacier, you cannot yeah. directly go and access. 
you have okay. to request the uh, aws aws mm-hmm. they will uh, get you the data and give it to you it is something okay. that you cannot go and get it from glacier okay got it got it got it yeah, so yeah maybe maybe they have moved it yeah. to glacier yeah yeah uh, uh, deep park there in the glacier it's a very two right one is glacier another one is a deep uh, deep glacier Mm-hmm. which means that it takes uh, two or three days something like that to if you raise a request now it will take one or two days aws will get it from yes. glacier, deep glacier and give it to you Correct. the same way three uh, 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 snow sake is telling we need uh, time to get it back from uh, uh, fail safe that is what they are telling right right yeah so then most most likely it they are moving it to the archival glacier as three uh, and for other clouds i am not sure But yes, what you are saying is quite possible. So, uh, but yes, as I said, I have not come across these details in the documentation. And uh, as you know, Snowflake is cloud agnostic, right? I mean, you don't need to know the background of what cloud surveys and what it is using. Uh, but yes, most likely it looks what you have said. So yeah, since you had asked me in the beginning, like, can we? Uh, set the retention time at the time of creation also so yes it's quite possible so i'll just create this table as you can see i created it with 90 days and if i say show tables like my to be 90 days yeah so this say you can specify the uh, retention period at time of creation of database also scheme also and tables of course Currently, yeah. So continuing with this, currently when a database is dropped, the retention, the data retention period for child schema or tables, if explicitly set to different from the retention of the database, it is not honored. Do you understand? Yes. Right. So if you have retention period of database as two, and your table retention is say four, and if you have dropped the database. so you will only get the retention data back up to 2 days only it will not honor the individual level uh, values for that to happen you should instead of dropping the database first you can drop that table first and then you can drop the database so in that case individual objects will be honored okay so i think that's what the less next time next line says the child schema or tables are retained for the same period of time as the database that's right similarly when a schema is dropped the data retention for child tables if explicitly set to different from the retention of the schema is not honored the child tables are retained for the same period in of the time as schema to honor the data retention for these child objects drop them explicitly before you drop the database or schema so you can drop it hierarchy wise so you can start dropping from the lower level and keep going out up to the upper level and that way you can honor or you can basically restore back at as how it was uh, you know provided at the time of creation or altered in between so it will be honoring the individual uh, retention periods but they have to there has to be a particular particular sequence of dropping the objects low hierarchy to higher higher okay so if i drop the data base itself yeah how do i can uh, uh, undrop recover the table right where it will table will get create uh, i can that only na the table, right? so if i say drop database demo underscore db underscore new okay i dropped it right so i'll refresh it there's no demo db new If I say undrop, okay, it is recovered. 
See, I have the table back. Should I put some data here just for just for uh, experiment? Wait, let me put some data. I'll put it in the demo schema one. Okay. So you have the table. This one. Okay, this is the value of, of that column in the temp tab schema, right? Now let me drop the database. Refresh. And let me try to access the table. Table does not exist, not authorized, obviously, because the database is gone. Let me now undrop it. Okay. Let me refresh. Oops, sorry. Fresh okay, tables are back, database is back, everything is back, schema is also back. Okay, this is also back. Let me now. Okay, I need to select, reselect everything. Okay, so I have data also recovered. Understood? Yeah. Okay, but if I dropped a table first and say it was having some other retention, then that that will be honored. Okay, so that's how Snowflake works for the time travel. So this is all the queries that we just saw, like how to query using uh, timestamp, offset, statement ID and all that. And there's clothing, we'll see, I mean, clothing is nothing but your basically creating the table you're creating creating a clone of that table at a particular time back in time using the time uh, travel features using this at uh, you know offset or statement id but when we, when we are doing the zero copy cloning right that time i will show you this so how to how to i mean see the listings so these are the commands like show tables history like load, like, I mean, how to restore uh, dropped objects, undrop table, undrop schema, undrop this, that, you know, that way. So I think time travel is almost done. Okay. Similar to dropping an object, a user must have ownership privileges for an object to restore, of course. In addition, the user must have create privileges on the object type for the database or schema where the dropped object will be restored. Restoring tables and schema is only supported in the current schema or current database, even if a fully qualified name is specified. So basically it is talking about uh, the privileges that one particular user should have if in case he or she has dropped. Obviously if, if it doesn't have the privilege to drop, it, it won't be able to drop. But the owner of that particular object can only do that to re get it back, okay? And the tables and schemas that that were there in that current schema, only those will be restored. These are, I mean, again, this is some, uh, this is all demo kind of thing. You can try this out. You can see the slide and try this, you know, as part of your, uh, call it assignment or work. Okay, so let's talk about this last topic called fail safe. It is completely theoretical actually. There's no demo or like that. So already I've given you an idea. Once the time, the retention period is over, Snowflakes moves all those updated changes and historical data into fail-safe. So let's read what it is. Separate and distinct from time travel, fail-safe ensures historical data is protected in the event of a system failure or other catastrophic event, example, hardware failure or security breach. Okay. Failsafe provides a non-configurable. You cannot configure this as like you can configure data retention time. You cannot configure failsafe. It's it's seven days for all. 
but only for permanent ones. Okay, not for transient and temporary. Remember that seven-day period, uh, seven period during which historical data may be recovered by Snowflake. This period starts immediately after the time travel retention period ends. Note, however, that a long-running time travel query will delay moving any data and objects in the account to into Snowflake until the query completes. So maybe so it's say your data retention time is going to get over, but you have already fired that query and it was going to get into fail-safe zone. So it will not move into fail-safe zone un unless it recovers that data for you and then later on it will move it to fail-safe. And fail-safe is a data recovery service that is provided on a best effort basis and is intended only for use when all other recovery options have been attempted. Okay, so you if, if it's possible for you to recover through time travel feature, you should try that. And this should be a last, last resort as per Snowflake. <clears throat> Failsafe is not provided as a means for accessing historical data after the time travel retention period has ended. So suppose you wanted to access, say, some sales data in history, just for your analysis, you wanted to see, but it has moved out of the time travel. You cannot go and request Snowflake that I want to do some analysis, so can you give me back? It is not intended, this failsafe services is not intended for those data analysis of historical data kind of stuff. It is only for recovering the data. So they will ask you a lot of questions. They will, you know, uh, you know, make sure that you actually need it. And then only they will give it back to you. It is, it is, it is for use only by Snowflake to recover data that may have been lost or damaged due to extreme operational failures. Data recovery through failsafe may take from several hours to several days to come. So this is all theoretical. I mean, it is what all as per the directions of Snowflake, okay, that uh, you know you have to follow. And as I showed you in the beginning only, if you go to the account and if you go to the billing and usage, and if you want to look at specifically the storage cost, so there is a certain uh, uh, parameter in the storage cost which adds to the costing <coughs> or the billing is the failsafe. Okay. Well, of course, for the seven days, let's see what are the failsafe storage costs. Storage fees are incurred for maintaining historical data from data during both time travel and failsafe periods. Fees are the fees are calculated for each 24 hour period from the time the data changed. The number of days historical data is maintained is based on the table type and the time travel retention period of the table. Okay, so I think Shiva, you had asked like, uh, even if we have enterprise edition, if we have 90 days, we still have to pay for it. So it's not like that. Okay. So it is the number of historical data is maintained and it is based on your time travel retention period also. So also Snowflake minimizes the amount of story required for historical data by maintaining only the information required to restore the individual table rules that were updated or deleted. So it is a, a behind the scenes, uh, basically uh, Snowflake, doesn't you know take complete backups? It only takes backups of data that was changed, right? So that way it will not cost you a lot. So they make sure it is cost effective. As a result, storage usage is calculated as a percentage of the table that changed. Correct. Full copies of tables are only maintained when the tables are dropped or truncated. Okay. So just for some deletions or normal deletions or normal update, they will only keep track of the changed data. And so it will not basically, uh, you know, that doesn't happen in your normal recovery, backup recovery system, right? You don't keep an incremental uh, uh, historical backups, right? You keep it based on the time. Okay, this is 10 minutes back recovery of database. This is five minutes back backup of database and all that. It's a complete full set of the database in any case, whether it's update, delete or whatever it is. But Snowflake gives you that luxury, so it basically saves you the time and the cost as well. Uh, this is the table. Permanent time retention is up to 0 to 1 in standard 90. We have already seen this. And transient is uh, 0 or 1 is max for time retention. Failsafe is 7 for, and 0 for transient and temporary type of objects. So min and max historical data maintained is 7. Eight days. So basically, if you if you call uh, retention period of seven, and max historical data is maintained up to eight days, 
which is obviously equal to plus one, right? One plus seven. And in case of 90, it will be minimum is seven and maximum is 97 or 97 days. And for transient, it is just one because that too is also dependent on time travel. It's not because of fail safe. Okay, so the first part here is of uh, time travel and the second one is of fail safe. So minimum is time travel and maximum is up to, up to the fail safe uh, factor. So we have completed time travel. Tomorrow we will complete data sharing also. Okay. And then uh, next week we'll try to uh, finish off the, the other topics. So I think we have four or five topics remaining. So I think two, three weekends more and we should be done. So any questions on this before we wrap up? No, I'm good. <laughs> is Venka dropped off? Or is... Okay, we know this also. Okay. Uh, and we are actually uh, in between guest came. So oh, actually, okay. that's the reason I could not uh, but I'll see the recording. Okay, okay, no problem. So, Vinod, you joined late or what? Yeah, you can see. I joined late. Okay, okay, no worries. Just have a look at the recording and yeah, let okay. me know in case of any uh, doubts. Yeah, sure. Okay. <clears throat> okay, guys, thank you, and I'll see you tomorrow.